Hey everybody, it's Eric from epautos.com, the Libertarian Car Guy. I'm going to do a quick video rant about the new Discovery. Disco is back. Um, people who know about this vehicle affectionately refer to it as the Disco. Um, and Land Rover took it off the market for a couple of years. And uh, now it's back, replacing the LR4. And it's both similar and very different um, than the old Discovery, uh, which a lot of you hardcore 4x4 guys uh, might remember. I certainly remember it. The old Discovery was a great off-roader, but it was a bit under-engined, even though it did have a V8. Um, and it was a bit tipsy-topsy, too, uh, if you tried to take it uh, through the curves. It was a really good vehicle uh, when the pavement ended, but not really so great on pavement. Uh, this one, on the other hand, is both very good off-road and on. Um, can vouch for that from personal test drive experience. Now, it looks very different too. You can still kind of sort of see that they've done the stepped roof thing, which was a Discovery trademark, uh, and not just a, a visual cue, but also enabled them to uh, give really good um, second row uh, headroom, which in a lot of SUVs is a problem just because of the nature of the design. The floor pan tends to come up and that usually decreases. Uh, the available headroom uh, in other than the front rows. So you can kind of see there's still a little bit of a hump here, but it's much more subtle than it used to be. This is, here's the little, the little hump. I mean, it used to be a really pronounced hump that would go like that. Something else that's profoundly different uh, about the new Disco versus the original uh, is that it no longer even offers a V8. And I know, initially I wanted to cry too, but uh, it has a supercharged V6 gas engine that's shared with a uh, number of Jaguar models. Um, and while it may have two fewer cylinders, it's got a hell of a lot more power, 340 horsepower. Uh, and trust me, the thing books, it moves out uh, 0 to 60s around 7 seconds or so. And uh, if I remember correctly from back in the 90s, the, uh, the Disco was about as quick as a Prius. Uh, and actually a Prius might have been quicker. You can also get, um, as an option, um, a turbo diesel engine in this thing, and it's one of the few SUVs that still offers uh, a diesel because of the uh, federal government's uh, jihad uh, against diesel-powered anything. Land Rover is one of the few manufacturers that has somehow managed to uh, continue to be able to offer them and get them through the EPA's emissions gauntlet. Uh, and it's got tremendous torque, a bit less horsepower, but when you get a diesel, you want that torque. Uh, if I were going to buy one of these for myself, since I live out here in the woods and actually do go off-road, uh, I personally would probably go with the diesel just because of that reason. The fuel economy is better, but it's not gigantically better. The main reason is you've got that, that really strong low-end torque. Um, but I like that gas engine too. Um, love the supercharger as well. The entire industry has gone away from supercharging um, to get more engine, more power out of smaller engines and has gone to turbocharging instead. And while they have made great strides, with turbos in terms of eliminating the, uh, the dreaded lag that was a characteristic of a turbo because generally speaking the uh, exhaust had to build up pressure before the turbo would spin and that's why they had that momentary lag uh, when you hit the gas uh, before anything happened. The supercharger on the other hand is a belt driven, engine driven uh, compressor so the response is instantaneous and even now uh, it is a much more faster reacting engine um, in my opinion, based on a lot of test driving of all kinds of different vehicles uh, than turbocharged vehicles. And also, and this is the big side benefit and the perk that I like the most, you've got that supercharger whine, that wonderful sound that a supercharger makes when it spools up. Um, I will try my best to do a road test video um, so that you can hear it. It's somewhat muffled. They put these acoustic covers on every engine, which is just a shame. Let me try and show you something here. If I can get this thing off, bear with me a minute. Okay, I got the stupid plastic cover off. Now the supercharger is nestled down there uh, in the V of the engine, actually underneath the intake manifold. And the intake manifold, even though they're trying to hide it, is actually a pretty, pretty intake manifold. Uh, it's a nice piece of cast aluminum, and it's just a shame that they didn't put some ribbing on that and then uh, maybe anodize it and put supercharged or Jaguar or Land Rover or something on it to make it look cool. And <clears throat> personally, I would have preferred that they let the supercharger make a bit more noise. I think the people who buy these vehicles appreciate the sound of a blower. Um, anyway, what else? Let's have a look at the inside. Typical uh, Jaguar-ish, uh, Jaguar Land Rover-ish commonalities. You've got this uh, little rotary knob for the shifter that comes up when you first turn the vehicle on. Here, I'll show you how that goes. Watch it. The French, all these stories about... 
No, actually, I gotta get in and hold the brake, don't I, before it'll, before it'll do it. Okay, watch, here we go. There it goes. Isn't that cool? There's right now. You have a nice LCD touchscreen, of course, that's becoming a given in cars, period. Uh, you have the multiple uh, off-road and on-road uh, drive settings here, uh, which again you select with this uh, with this rotary knob, which also descends down into the console. Uh, straightforward instrument cluster, which I like. You know, it's not an over-the-top LCD flat screen. It's a nice analog speedometer and tack. Pretty simple laid-out controls. But hey, this is also a Land Rover model, so it's not just about off-road. It's also about luxury. This one's an HSE, so it's got the back seat uh, entertainment system, individual LCD t screens built into the seat backs. You've also got all your secondary controls here for the HVAC system as well as the, uh, the entertainment system. And that's about all I've got right now because it's going to take forever to upload this video because of my uh, countrified inbred low speed internet, which unfortunately I don't have a lot of options about. But I will give you the full straight dope in the, uh, the written article, which should be up shortly uh, over at epautos.com. Um, there's also a fresh rant up there. Uh, that I think you guys will find of interest uh, about these public citizen groups, these self-styled public citizen groups. I'm a member of the public. They've never asked me for my opinion about anything, and I wonder whether they've asked you your opinion about anything. Anyway, they keep tub-thumping and pushing for the government uh, to enact these 54, the 54 mile, uh, 54 and a half mile per gallon federal CAFE mandatory minimum, as well as characterize carbon dioxide and inert gas as a pollutant which is gonna be the death of cars uh, like this Jaguar or this Land Rover here and pretty much any other car except for an electric car, uh, which pretty much nobody can afford uh, or really realistically wants to drive when you get down into the nitty gritty of the thing. Anyway, uh, that's all up at epautos.com. Thanks for viewing and uh, we will catch up with you again soon.